All right, everyone. Hey, welcome back to Made the Zoo be with you, a flesh and blood podcast. I'm here with the most, uh, I can't do the George thing, you know? Nobody the, can. The, the most amazing person in the whole world, George Went, and the greatest single store in the complete universe, Mitch from Midtown Merchant, and the absolute greatest YouTube channel ever, Louie from Kitchen Tea. That's what George sounded like two weeks ago on our podcast. Yeah, and the last the comments. Week, it better go ahead put that in the comments and then last better. week it was just bash louis week so you know no, last uh, week was let's all have a group therapy about being abandoned by the person we came to see week <laughs> that's what it was we all had to look into each other's eyes and tell each other it will be okay even though we were abandoned well we are uh we're glad to be back here at made the zoo be with you uh a regular new podcast for us and um i want to start out uh there was a lot of um two weeks ago we had an episode that was definitely uh, more of a hot topic. The comment section was on fire. I think it's the most commented on video that I have ever produced. You're welcome. Um, the dialogue in our Discord server, in the chat in our Discord server was really good. A lot of feedback, a lot of um, a lot of emotions though. It was a really hot, it was a really hot topic. And I just wanna, uh, we got a lot of feedback and I, I want to remind everyone who has given us feedback uh, that these three people on this podcast love the game of Flesh and Blood. Uh, I'm yep. not going to say that we love it more than anybody else in the world, but I think it would be I don't hard. Love to, it more than people. No, I, I, I think it would be hard to find people who uh, have more. Uh, I, we we all are here because we love the game, and we've all given a significant amount of our life to the game of Flesh and Blood. Uh, and put a lot of our stake in it. So I just wanna remind everyone before we get started that everything we say is out of good intentions of like believing in the game and wanting the game to succeed. And um, before you get to the point where you're saying things like, you guys are just complaining or you guys want the game to fail to buy more cards or something stupid like that. Like it's a little ridiculous uh, to assume that either of the three of us don't want this game to succeed i quit my job for it george's entire business model went from magic the gathering to flesh and blood and mitch runs a single shot like it we all want this game to succeed so there's my little frustration to the uh to the people who are commenting Listen, negative i i you know and i beg you louis not to engage with these people i'll be honest with you i think louis will confirm that for me if you think that I don't care if Flesh and Blood succeeds, I would love you to see my uh, spreadsheet of assets. Um, <laughs> I have like, I have made it very clear I'm all in on the zoo. I think the zoo is amazing. I think the zoo is uh, going to do very well in the marketplace. I think I was borne out by my comments two weeks ago, frankly. Boom, boom. But <clears throat> I have more money in Alpha than I do in the zoo. I have more money in Monarch than I do with Alpha. And I have more money in singles than I do of Monarch. <laughs> more money in Monarch than Alpha. <laughs> that did Monarch not go well for me. Monarch to was wondering. Monarch to... <laughs> uh, this is, this yeah. is why I'm mean to you, because you use hate speech with me. This is why. <laughs> this is why, right there. Right Trigger. there. Monarch to uh, 1K. Anyway. I, I just I I wanted to start that out Louis, because don't worry about this. Like I think, I, I'm not worried about thing. if you can listen if, if you listen to this podcast and go these three bozos don't care about flesh and blood or don't like flesh and blood like that's on them not on us and don't worry about it. Okay. Anyway, back Keep to your that. Hat backwards and looking good, baby. The, the the last part of that is everything we say here is based on our opinion. Everything we say here is based on what we see and honest feedback to what we see uh, in in the world of flesh and blood as store owners and as singles owners and as stupid content creators. So today we're going to talk about MegaCon a little bit, George's experience. Uh, since I unfortunately had to miss out on it, um, I I will not apologize for taking the healthy step for my pregnant wife and not going my to man. the not going to the covid capital of the universe um what was your trip and, last week by the way it's true actually i did not go to the covid capital of the universe yeah, that's uh, fine. did you have a good trip last week i just want to make sure i, you had a good time. I, I did i, I went good. to my parents yeah, I house to make sure. I was so, worried about okay you. i had a flooding basement and went to my parents house um and uh and then we're going to talk about first edition we're going to try to solve some issues there's been some great dialogue going on in the uh wall street chat about first edition and i think we want to uh touch on it a little bit on maybe how we can solve some of the first edition woes shout uh, out to wall I, street i think it works for flesh and blood and i think there's some things that will carry over to uh evaluating first edition for metazoo too 
um, and to see how those things can go. And then we're going to talk uh, about the Mezu Minute. So, George, Megacon, walk us through it, man. Well, listen, I think, like, for me, it absolutely confirmed why LSS needs a U.S. representative. I had mm-hmm. great meals with Texas Ted, had a great breakfast with Metazoo Mike. I took all of your jokers and all of MetaZoo Jokers out for a pizza one night. And like we all broke bread together and we all talked and we all learned about the game and we all opened packs together. And like the important thing is like we made a connection with each other. Right. Yeah. Like I now talk to them. Yeah. And like that is something that I think, like I know we've talked about this now every week of the podcast. I guess we'll make it one more. Like that is something that I think LSS needs to take away from this. Yeah. I, I like, mean, I think yeah. those. Your people that went down there who were all amazing, by the way, even though you abandoned them and they were sad about that, they were all still amazing and we all had a great time without you. Um, they now have a connection to medicine. Right. They have memories connected to medicine. And listen, like that's great if you're medicine, right? If you're Mike, that's fantastic news. Right. But like, you know, again, like I get not going to Megacon if you're LSS. I think Maybe that was a mistake, but it is what it is. Um, but like, you gotta go to Gen Con. So um, yeah, I mean, I think there's, I, th- I think there's definitely some things that like I wish we saw that. I think you told me that there was one box of flesh and blood. So, <laughs> there was a oh no! There, so <laughs> my favorite part of this. So so apparently somebody came on Saturday with a few cases. Oh, that's cool. Saw, don't worry. Um, but up until that guy came with cases, there was one scrunched box of Welcome to Wraith Unlimited. He was a little bit ambitious the first day at 120. It did not sell. He was less ambitious the second day at 100. They still didn't sell the entire con. Um, so, there was more Beanie Babies than there were Flesh and Blood boxes. So I get that. And I, I think that it's something that uh, I am I think we all would want. Uh, I think like, if you're LSS. You game. Yeah, but it, like, it, it, there is a dynamic where like you're overseas and it's hard to accomplish that. Unless, uh, like we're saying, if you had a representative here in the States. How- how many TCGs were there represented? Was Magic the Gathering there? They had, was... they had a ton of Magic boxes. They had a ton of Pokemon boxes. They had, you know, MetaZoo was everywhere. I think they, I think Mega, I think MetaZoo should get sponsored MegaCon, to be honest with you, at this point. That's all anybody was talking about. There was a lot, the longest there line a by a mile. There was a huge booth. I saw yeah. pictures. The booth, I mean, the booth wasn't that big, but there's a huge, you know, surrounding. There's I mean, a like, crowd, if you will, that was taking over that area. We can ask Ted about this, but I'll bet you they saw hundreds of people a day, if not thousands yeah. on Saturday. I mean, that's like, awesome. And they taught a bunch of people the game. Like, listen, yeah. like, MetaZoo is here to teach you how to play the game. That's I've cool. heard also a lot of retailers are wanting to meet those who are involved with MetaZoo to build a relationship with them or not. So, so, like, it, it's kind of two-sided. A, like, you're kind of getting some lead gen, right, for customers or, or players, but you're also getting retailers who are interested in the game or who sell different yeah. TCGs who are wanting to know more about it. And I mean, like, I just, you know, Megacon was great. I, I frankly needed it. My, I think everybody knows this. My road to nationals fell apart the week before we had COVID. Because of COVID. <laughs> and hit all my people. I had 36 cancellations within Oof. 72 hours of That's the crazy, event. Bro. Like, I still had a good turnout. I think everybody had it's fun. It's still 20-ish people, right? Yeah, we had, like, mm. almost 30. Um, it That's was good. Great. It was just, like, I had more cancellations in the last 72 hours than I had people, and that did not. Yeah, I, that, I, that I feels bad. Break. I needed yeah. a break. Um you know, it was a good con. I mean, like, I'll say this. It was way smaller of a con than I thought it would be. Yeah, that's what do I Do you heard. think that was COVID or do you think that was... Uh, I don't... I think part of it was COVID. I think it's also just a smaller con than I thought. Like, I mean, I... So, okay. the, for my main It's business, called Mega have, Con and it wasn't Mega? It was definitely not Mega. <laughs> um, I expected, like, Comic-Con numbers and it was not uh, Mega numbers. So... I, I think that uh, for for me, the thing with the LSS is like, A, I, I understand with the current climate why it's hard to get over to the United States. Like, I, I understand that. I, I completely agree. If we had a liaison, it would be great. Um, I also think that the, the difference is there of like MetaZoo. Again, I can't I say this all the time on the channel. MetaZoo is trying to be an IP I don't I don't get that attitude from flesh and blood that they want to be this big IP uh, because the things that they are doing aren't suggesting suggesting that 
Uh, and so I, I do think like Megacon probably not the best place for Flesh and Blood because I do think it's smaller. But I agree right. that not, like like the mega like um like I honestly thought that uh, the calling would have been great at uh at, it was a Gen Con that's in Indianapolis yeah. right yeah. like Gen Con, uh, yeah. you have all the magic I think what's his face the creator of Magic the Gathering organizes that right yeah he did. Uh, I mean like, so, listen I think like something like that would have been super cool as, like like this like this like I know everybody hates it you know even know everybody, everybody was. All the fat people were cranky last week with me, and that's okay. Your salt brings me joy. Um, <laughs> but like that, well, it's your seasoning for your life. What I think everybody needs to realize is that this is a <clears throat> competition. Like we don't want to admit this to ourselves. I will like, never admit this. I know you won't, because like you live in fantasy land where there's also two hundred thousand flesh and blood players. Like at the end of the day, like this is a competition, and like if MetaZoo is there and they're attracting new players and they are discussing things with retailers and they're expanding their reach and more people play and collect their games and more people get MetaZoo Mike's autograph and they get Poncho's autograph and they feel a connection. You've lost if you're LSS. Yeah. Like that is something that you have not done for these players. None of the players that were there with you and they are all predominantly flesh and blood players. Not one has an autograph of James White. I'm the only one who has a single autograph of James White. That's cool. It's underneath my pillow so I can dream of him at night. <laughs> um, I can dream of going direct. Um, so, uh, last the week, Tooth Fairy, him, are you just I, you wake I, up one morning? I'll be, I'll be, I you just wake up one morning and you have like a letter from LSS saying we're going direct. Is it like the I Tooth Fairy? That the, that the signed card turns into that letter every <laughs> night and it, just, it hasn't yet. It's like the Tooth Fairy. It's like, right. it's like the James White Fairy. He's going to take the white take his signed <laughs> card back and put down a direct letter. And I, I guess I think that's very touching of him. I, I, I respect your thought process in that. I think it's valid. Like, I think your thought process is valid in that. Uh, I think LSS's model is at the, at the grassroots of the LGSs. Um, and that's why I say I think it would have been cool to see like an LGS. Like it doesn't have yeah. to be this big, huge tent where everyone's getting free cards. Correct. But um, it would have been cool to say. I it, anyway. I George, what else about MegaCon was cool other than the competition that you're bringing up about MetaZoo and Flesh and Blood? I mean, the it's, whole thing was fun. Like it was like, it's a lot of fun. Like we hung out with people. Your group was a little. Uh, your group had a very good time. Is how we will phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> my old butt was in bed every night at 10 o'clock still george uh, kept like, sending me texts saying your kids are wild your, your kids, kids i said wild. george they're not my kids most of them were older than me and secondly Ooh. i took no responsibility for these guys <laughs> hold on to your britches if you're going to vegas boys and girls that's all i'll tell you like oh, man. they were wild in orlando florida okay yeah. like that was one fragment of the entire population. <laughs> I'll be honest; it made me rethink my trips to Vegas. Um, they played a road to Nats on Saturday too. They got our team, Team Kitchen Fable, this past weekend. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see who won. Uh, Bratwurst won. Uh, then we got Jimmy got another top four. Jake got a top four. Jacob got top eight. And uh, on Sunday got top two, so like Man. they got they dominated. Uh, Can they just hand off their tickets to other people? Huh? Did they win any of them? Tyler Broughton won. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the, we got a lot of tunic owners. Wait, Tyler, Tyler's on your team? Yeah. I didn't know that. So top pick? four? Does top four take you to nationals? Is that right? Or is it yeah. the top? Team yeah. Kitchen Fable is going to be heavily represented at nationals. Are you buying them jerseys? Yes. Are you buying yeah, their tickets? No. Mm. <laughs> uh, maybe their event tickets, but not Team not... Compete Sport is going to be opening up soon, boys and girls. That's you all. Are, you are you two are both sponsors of Team oh, Kitchen Fable. Team you have a not closing. So you have do a I get a jersey? Great, do I have a great run? <laughs> I think signing you non compete, but I don't have time. Team Compete Sport did wonderful. Thank you, Tyler, for representing us very well. <laughs> We will now be merging with Kitchen Table TCG, though. Thank you very much for <laughs> sure. I, George, I you have a non compete clause. <laughs> I, I accept the sponsorship for Jersey. You, you don't want to. You, you don't want to compete with Team Kitchen Fable. Let me just tell you, we're we're gonna. You, anyway, they were playing Road to Nationals like after their partying on Friday night. It was like, how are you guys on Saturday and went out like out <laughs> out like not like old man George out like out. What's out. what's old man George like? Like out. you know, you have a pizza at ten o'clock. You get some heartburn. You go to bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's great. That's my night out. Uh, no I'm beer, looking for no beer, uh, just to like cap no, it out. Like, you know, like, I had, I think I had a couple beers. I had some beers with Ted. Wow, you that's went awesome. hard in the paint on uh, Saturday night. I was very oh, jealous. Saturday night. Uh, I was mm. very jealous. I didn't get to hang out with you guys. Very sad. Well, uh, I would, I, I would not have been, uh, I would not have been out there past one or two beers. Uh, I would you have been like, hey, old man George, I got to go edit a video. I would have been like, I got to go edit this <laughs> vlog now. I have to go depress people with my market updates. I'll be back, you guys. Everything's down. <laughs> Dude, the market I'll updates my this videos. week. I'm the Louis. market updates this week are going to be horrible. Um, you think? It's already going to be Friday, though, so they've already gotten through it. Maybe this episode of this podcast can lift their spirits up a little bit. Hey, that's fine. Yeah. What What's on the other side of the <laughs> updates? The other oh, side? Oh, the stream. The, moon. the stream? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? I'm just saying, be... like, we have, like, we have, like, the, you know, the not-so-good side. What's on the good, like, on the good side? Metazoo side. Is there, like, a flip side? Metazoo kick butter is going Well, bananas. we're all. Yeah. Metazoo, everything's going bananas. It's kind of settled down a little bit. Can we see for the MetaZoo Minute people? No, I, mean, I have a very special MetaZoo Minute plan. I know. I'm very proud of my MetaZoo. I think minute. some of that conversation can pop up here when we talk about first edition. So I think that would yeah. absolutely be All applicable. Right. Let's apply. That's that. that. Can I paint the picture? Right, go ahead. You can waste your time. Go ahead. I didn't know okay. you were an illustrator. Let's so for for the, there's a lot of conversation going on in the community, um, specifically in Wall Street. I've seen a lot of it happening, but also in my Discord server in the Flesh and Blood. Shout channel. out to Wall Street. Yes, shout out to Wall Street. May your memes be dreams. Um, Mondo 1K, Crucible to 5K, and Alpha to 5K, so I can buy some more. Um, so it's already I, below 5K. I, I, I only have one. I, 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 I am not touching any more boxes ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, the first edition problem seems to be, uh, I don't want to call it a problem. If there's an issue with things that are happening with first edition. Here are a few of the issues. Number one, everyone wants cold foils, right? So like you, you've got to make enough first edition, um, for, for people to get what they want. Uh, but number two, the, the way that supply works for unlimited, uh, apparently, and this is the way I feel like it works. Correct me if I'm wrong, George or Mitch, but basically the more unlimited that you buy results in you getting more first edition, uh, allocation. So a lot of people are just, uh, <laughs> buying unlimited and fire selling it in order to get allocated more first edition. Uh, and then you had um, some stores to hold it back. And now, you know, Monarch, you're seeing stores pop up that had held back product. George is just showing off cards. Uh, and so there's a lot of showing it, off. He's just showing off cold foils I there were boxes. and sealed boxes. boxes. I thought there were three. That's my bad, everybody. <laughs> and so, like, there's a lot of um, concern over what what are we doing with first edition? Uh, you guys want to elaborate on any other issues that you see? Like, well, does Flesh and Blood have value outside of cold foils? Mm. I mean, other than the cards that people play with, there's absolutely value in those, right? As mm -hmm. a single store, it's interesting. Like snags, CNCs, E strikes, tomes, like all those go. But like, I have thousands of supers. I'm being facetious, but like, right. what do I do with all those? But yeah. like, first edition, people love the cold foils and they're beautiful cards. I love cold foils. But like, does first edition have value outside of cold foils? Mm. Maybe in the, like, the earlier print runs, but I mean, for the current that, print runs. I was looking at before you got on the chat, and like, even like a CNC is only like fifty dollars more for first edition non foil than right. it is for unlimited. Yeah. Like the problem, like I'll make, let me be very clear here. When LSS talked to me about unlimited, I did not see this problem coming. I yeah. I think we were all were excited for unlimited, um, right? We're like, players can have cards. This is exciting. Like, the problem is that the price differences between first edition and unlimited for 99.9, 99.5% of cards is zero or very close to zero. Mm. Yeah. And so you're getting, you know, all these collectors are buying boxes and boxes and boxes and bo other these evil collectors are buying boxes and boxes and boxes of, of first edition. And then there's like, well, now they have a bunch of chaff that they don't know what to do with. And so they're selling it on the secondary market. Right. And like it drives down the price of those cards dramatically. They're like, bam, unlimited. And you're like, okay, what do I do? I'll buy that those was five definitely monarchs. I'm missing. I, right. I, I want to I want to call you out on that, George, because I don't think that's correct. About ninety nine point nine percent of the cards. I think it's correct I think about. 5. I, I think myself. I think you, I think what you're saying is certainly true with monarch. Uh, you're you're seeing that. No, look at alpha. 
No, with Alpha, I mean, if you look at an Alpha foil Majestic. Uh, so the you, only ones that are different are the Legendaries, the Fable, in like Rainbow style, Foil Majestics. Not even all, frankly, of the Foil Majestics. Eh, like if you put a Foil yeah. Majestic from Alpha I, up for a hundred dollars, it would be an almost instant sale. I put and up the, the Rainbow not, Foil the, Majestics this week for two fifty. And that's sold. what I said. Foil they Majestics, did sell? Legendary. Yeah. You didn't say Foil Foil Majestics Majestics in that first comment. Foil Majestic, Legendary, and Fabled. That's it. Yeah, you didn't miss the Foil Majestic. You you missed the Foil. I would say the Foil Majestics are holding premium, but they're not quite a little bit in Monarch. But I think the real issue is what we are seeing with Crucible War, I think, is what we'll see, and um, and Monarch non-Foil Majestics uh, as opposed to Unlimited. There's just not that thing. And I I, I brought— I'm kind of okay with that. I yeah I mean it's interesting it's a it's an interesting take um I don't know I so but then you know then you have what's happening is there's this race to first edition and then what do you do with players if first edition is two hundred dollars and players don't want to buy the boxes uh, and then you've got unlimited that's you know being fire sold so that the stores can get more first edition it's well, just I mean, a like, we it's a weird place well and what's interesting is I've asked my both my reps so two different distributors like if this is going to happen and they at least for the st louis and dallas hubs they've said that that's not the case for me For what that i need to buy it like that my unlimited drives my first edition they are lying to you they have said that they are looking at stores who are buying unlimited yeah but like it's not like they didn't say there's a direct correlation of more unlimited equals more first they just said, like, we will not, we we are going to allocate based on if you're ordering unlimited or not. So well, maybe there like, is a direct correlation there that he just didn't clarify. And like, I uh, think that's a good policy. I actually, I absolutely I think agree. it's a good policy because then the play, the stores that have players, the stores who are com- who are supporting the game hypothetically yes. get more first edition. The issue is what we are seeing is a lot of stores that aren't really supporting the game buying and then fire selling yes, the unlimited. There are. There are two problems, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. The first is this problem that, like, not okay, Louis, ninety nine percent of the cards versus ninety nine point five, your highness, are the exact same price, more or less, in unlimited versus first edition. And that problem has only gotten worse as the sets have gone on. I suspect tails will be even worse in that front. I would agree. The well, other, like, listen, like, let's, I don't know why we're dancing around this. Here's the problem: there's two re- there's a retailer who gets everything under the sun, dumps unlimited boxes on eBay for an auction at yeah. $200 a case, and then they, you know, they can't give it away. Then they, you know, like, why are you, like, you know, I'm very lucky. They actually are giving boxes away. Buy a box yeah. of this, get a box of, or, like, get right. these two boxes for $100. And I mean, like, like, this, like, this, <laughs> did I hear that people were problem, randomly right? getting boxes of Monarch Unlimited in the mail? I got one. You got like you got a box of Monarch Unlimited just sent to you randomly for free. <laughs> it did not have a fable in it or Dang a legendary. It. Um, but I mean, like, listen, like I like that's the problem, right? Is that like you you have a store dumping boxes in an auction so it's not below map at two hundred dollars a case. Yeah. How do you want your LGS? Like that is more than some LGSs pay at distribution. I think a hundred percent. I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm just saying it might be. Yeah. Um. So like you know, and then like if you don't buy it in the auction at two hundred dollars a case, congratulations. If you buy a case, you're gonna get fifteen play mats, five hidden promos, and a uh, love letter. Right. I mean, like, listen, that's the problem, right? The problem is they have signed a deal that makes the LGS uncompetitive. So that seems to me more of an issue with unlimited, which obviously drives that obviously drives your allocation for first edition, even no, though no, Mitch's no, rep says no. Right. Uh, my point is that my point is that it's not that he didn't say no. He just said there wasn't freebies, a direct. You get you're also doing it with uh, you're also getting the same freebies with first edition now. SEG has the plan. Right. You now Fireball, I'm sure will do something because tails ain't moving real well for them. Yeah. Right. Like, they are well, doing the same freebies. I, I don't understand why we I don't know I don't understand why Channel Fireball doesn't come out with a hundred dollar boxes of first edition I I, I would oh, never I understand do, that because that's eighty dollars less than they're getting right now for I it. I know but like I I I don't get that anyway um I I, I they think, also have to refund all the other previous pre-orders you know, that they've already taken 
I think there's been a lot of conversation about um, how to change the the contents of first edition. Uh, George has a great idea. I, I think there's something to be said about oh, we man, we, great. we mentioned it once on a podcast of having a box topper, uh, but to help the idea of. Uh, first off, I think um, they are already working on this. I think LSS, I got we got to pat LSS on the back one. Like they are already apparently aware of this because they have delayed unlimited. Um, oh, no, yeah, that doesn't, that's the wrong. Like, no, that is the wrong. That, that is that is one that. that... Congratulations, you can't like he, like this. Like, I'll be honest, this is what drives me up a wall. Like, this is like the thing that LSS has going for it is that it's arguably the best game ever made and inarguably the most balanced game on the market today. Correct. If you look at RTN, like every hero but two, I'm sorry, Shiana, has won. <laughs> it is an incredibly balanced game. Shiana can't be played in classic constructed, George. It's a, it's, it's, it's a blitz on you talking? It's a, it's I don't a young, it's so a like, young hero. Here's the problem. When you say to, when you say to people... The you. thing I have going for me is that I have this amazing game, but you won't get access to it, access to it at anything close to MSRP. But don't worry, I'll help the collectors out by delaying unlimited. It does the exact opposite of what you want. Sure. This is what it, this is the problem I'm trying. This is a problem that I think my solution solves is that you can't both say my comparative advantage is that I'm a great game and then make it very hard to play it. Unless it you print make sense to me. Unless you print two hundred thousand boxes for all two hundred thousand yeah. players, fine. Then and do then, it. Yeah, and just then make do it. make first right. edition extremely massive. Make it map. Like this is silly, but like, here was my idea, and I think this is a good one because I think it solves a lot of the problems. It doesn't solve all of them, but I think it solves a lot of them. Get rid of first edition entirely, but ooh, big but, but secret layer. <laughs> But oh, I can't, I'm, can't, I'm just trolling. <laughs> Go ahead. Every box, the store's order for the release day, you get a bonus pack. And that bonus pack will have two cards in it. One is either a cold foil or a full art majestic or something like that. Cool. And the other one can be a staple that we need more of. CNC is back to $100 for unlimited. That's stupid. It's insane. Reprint the daylights out of it. Mm -hmm. So now you have solved both problems. And also, they should relieve a lot of pressure on LSS printers. Yeah. Because yeah, now you don't need to print on one print a run. separate box for first edition Unlimited. Right. You just need to print a two-card pack. Yeah. If we and, were having... and, and, and here would be the rule. If you pre-order with your LGS, you get the pack. Yeah, which means if they have to print enough packs. Your We're LGS not going to do buy a box you, stuff. Hold on, boss. If you pre-order through your LGS and you don't get the pack, your that LGS is banned for life from LSS, and James White sends you a poop bag in the mail <laughs> under your pillow. So the James under the James, the James White fairy <laughs> puts a poop bag under your pillow <laughs> like, and sets yeah. it on fire. Walks that is away. How, like, I think that would uh, actually solve a lot of the problems. Yeah. So the poop bags would solve all the problems. You, you brought this up in uh, this was a discussion uh, in Wall Street, and I loved this reply from somebody. Uh, somebody said, "Well, what about the collectors who want to collect first edition boxes?" And the reply to that was, "They have Alpha Crucible Monarch." It's also they like then keep. They're going to get a pack that has the two cards you care about in it. Keep it sealed. I don't care what you do with it. Yeah. You can put it underneath your pillow and hope it turns into a direct letter. So, like, but, keep your pack sealed if you want to. Like, but there can still be chase cards in those packs. Of course. There could course. also be – so do you do packs or do you do like a small supplementary set that comes with it? Like a small no, collector box? No, no the you whole do. point of this is it's easy to print for LSS. It's the cold foils that would have been in first edition are now put into these first edition packs, basically, that it replaces. So now instead of having unlimited and first edition booster boxes, you just it. have Tales of Aria booster box. But they don't they don't have to organize all the print runs. They don't have to get the product here and there at certain times. They just ship all the product. It comes in. It's an unlimited wave of first of it's an unlimited wave of the box. Doesn't say unlimited. Doesn't say anything on it. Doesn't say first edition. But the packs that come on release, on pre-release day, on release day, whatever it is, uh, for a specific amount of time, have the the percentage of cold foil legendaries and cold foil commons and cold that foil fables get. that you would typically have in the set, so that you don't have this whole 
shenanigans happening at the distribution level and at the uh, at the retailer level. What's really cool too about this, remember how like uh, how much of a cluster cuss the cold foil distribution was on yeah. Monarch? So now, now this is the thing. I'm getting one cold foil common at a minimum, hopefully from each box. So I buy a case. Am I getting four of these packs? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. One so per box. Here's, here's the thing that makes it interesting. I order 40 or 50 boxes. Yep. I can tell you right now, as a singles retailer, like this business model would just, I would have to shut up my store. Cold yep. foils are how I make my money. I'll like, speak of you fondly. You will well, no, still, you would still get your I cold foils. I wouldn't get them because I'm not a brick and mortar giving them to pre-orders. I can't sell boxes, so I would not get these packs. I don't get Wait. any buy box promos. Well, I don't get you, any I, of that stuff. You would stuff. have to change that. You'd have to get those boxes. You'd have to be able well, to sell Well, but like, how is that fair for me as a single store who was legacied in? So you would just get the boxes with the promo pack right. as a single store. I don't understand what but you're saying. I wouldn't get the promo packs because the promo packs are supposed to go to players. They're not supposed to, for me to open no, up and sell no, them on the open market. Not That's not it. what we're saying. Neither of us That's are saying that. Saying. <laughs> you're saying, saying I would get a separate pack that is yep. delivered with pre-orders. Yep. So it, it is a box. I get a box and I get a pack. And the pack yep. is outside of the box, not in yep. the box. Right? There you go. Right. And you I, open the pack in the box and you sell the singles from the pack in the box. I get you. I'm telling you, I would not get the pack in the box. Stores cannot sell promos. They would not yeah, give me not those. They're not promos. Things. They're not promos. I understand. I'm just telling you, I doubt I would get those. Okay. They would okay. prioritize players uh, in, over. In, in is, our imaginary situation. So in my I would, land, you if, do. if I get packs, I'm good. Okay. I'm saying I'm saying that I don't get any buy box promos. I don't get any armory kits. I don't get any promos from LSS. They give we me are, nothing. I want to be very clear. We are not calling these promos. But that is not the idea. Okay. The idea so that is, is this is also but, George's but, fantasy land. So George can make any rules <laughs> he want in his fantasy land. In this fantasy land, George is direct and makes So these are real promos. packs. These are real packs. Yeah. 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 Think think of it as um as taking away for, I, I I like this thought. You're removing first edition boxes and replacing them with first edition packs. That oh, have two I cards like that. In them. I like they that. Two are so good. They have two cards in them, and it's it guaranteed is. to be a cold foil or a full art foil of the Majestic. It, it all be... the special and, and like Ooh. here's the thing: I don't think Ooh. LSS is going to like this. I don't think or that anything they... that, or anything else they want, right? They can put it if it's like okay for tales. We were going to do full art Louis promo commons. Well, they did. They the did pack. release. So MetaZoo did those release boxes that had packs in them. You had a booster pack. You had like a there's usually yeah. like a hollow That's in a there. Stopper. So you could put you could put that same pack in a re, like a release box as well, and you get like a free blitz deck. You get a release pack, potentially cold foil in there. George doesn't like that. That's not a bad idea. You get a little coin in there. Know. I don't. Oh, uh, I don't. We can't do coins. I guess they could just copy MetaZoo exactly. That is a good point, Louis. Thanks for bringing that up. Maybe <laughs> it's maybe, actually Mitch. It was maybe, Mitch's a, idea. maybe a map, like maybe a map. But you could but, do like a map that has like a bunch of different things on it. But like, how much? This are, is where the hero is from. But, but how much are those packs going for right now for MetaZoo, like the box too topper? Much. Too much. Well, you say too much, but like, uh, I, it, like yeah. two fifty to three hundred dollars, like that. Like I, all the things that have been priced weirdly, that one George, makes no sense to me. How much would some of these cold foils go for? You think? If the exact same print amount, let's say there's five thousand of each, you know, common. So there's two things. First, I think they'd be worth less because we're going to have a lot more packs. That's yeah. fair. You have tons of packs. But you're only doing it for release, right? You're not going to just do release. packs infinitely. So, so, it's so pretty, that's the it's interesting it's thing. It's pretty easy. This is pretty easy. If you were going to have a print run of, let's call it 200,000 boxes, because you know th that would be one per player. Uh, if you're going to have a print mm -hmm. run of 200,000 boxes, you have 200,000 packs and then 5 million boxes that print for the whole print run. For You have to do one print run of Tales of Aria. This is not going to happen for Tales, but whatever the next set is. Right. Uh, we'll kingdoms. call it kingdoms uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you have kingdoms you have, 2.0 and, and then you're you know you're all of your packs it's the same distribution right you were going to have right. one cold foil per box so you have still have all the same things you just now don't have to deal with the box issue of um of a it's easier for lss it's easier for the distribution hubs it's easier for stores and it's easier on the secondary market oh. And you can make it even easier, and LSS can send you the packs versus distribution. Mm, that, that way happen? there's no games being played at distribution. Not saying anybody is playing games at distribution, because they would never do that. No. But 
uh, I'm sure that if you call your distributor today, they have absolutely no Monarch in their warehouse at all. Oh, and also no Alpha. I know. None at all. So that's very good of them. Um, <laughs> but just in case they would ever get that terrible idea, having it go directly from LSS to the stores would solve that problem as well. So the yeah. stores get allocated X number of boxes. They get a package from LSS uh, with the with the packs, and they get the boxes from their distribution. I like this. Yeah, I know you like it. It's your idea. I know. Um, All right, James White, I, I, make it happen and make me direct. So, so you would have one common foil, cold foil, and then one majestic or higher. No, no, you can't have what, two in there. Mitch, what, what's in what a box of pack? first edition? What's in a box of first edition? Exactly what's in a box is in the pack, dude. So, so, so you're if, telling me I could get four packs and they're all just common cold foils? Yeah, just like yeah, you could like get a case. A but how much does that? Sell? But right now, if I, oh, that's true. But if I open a monarch first right now, I'm probably guaranteed at least a legendary higher. No, it's no in a case. A no, but more importantly, like you can have one out of every four packs be legendary or higher. Yeah, you, you're saying it's you're taking you're removing the case, uh, the case premium guarantee, but, correct? But the case could still have legendaries in it. They're just rainbow foil legendaries. They're just rainbow oh, foils. Yeah, yeah, I mean the, the all the cards, have, all, all the, the cards, cards are exactly the same in the yeah, boxes. They're just the all cards, rainbow foils. They're just all no what foils. we see. Yeah, they are all what we see in unlimited. Yeah. So you would still have your case premium on the boxes, but you're you're just doing a lottery. Your cold foil lottery happens yeah. in the pack. Which means some guy is going to do great, and one guy's going to get five libraries, and the other guy's going to get just like five. Monarch. It'll be great. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> all of Can all Canada will have all the libraries, and uh, yeah, and that's true. That's how it works. That's what we do to help the Canadians out. There you go, Canada. You got one shout yeah, out, one positive shout out. <laughs> um, I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's a good. It's an interesting uh, idea. We, we George and I have been having a lot of conversations in private about how to solve this and so there's been a lot of dialogue going back and forth i actually gave him that idea uh but <laughs> <laughs> the disgust in the man's face i know that, that face was great no that's not true i did not do that uh, uh, they, they knew don't worry you did not yeah, say that they yeah. all knew that idea came from this mind not that line um i think that it, it solves some things i think it gets play cards into the player's hands instantly yep. there's no players who have to worry about not being able to get cards early on it allows collectors to focus on um, it allows collectors to focus on cards and singles, but you'd still have the 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 um, packs that could stay sealed. Those packs cannot be searchable. That would be that would be the biggest thing. They, those cards need to be them. those packs need to be exactly the same completely way. black and matted, yes. and they need to be um, meta zoo like the meta zoo foil. So you can't like even like. <laughs> Louis right. They should just put MetaZoo packs in as a box topper. That's a great <laughs> point, Louis. Thank you for sharing that. No, listen, if they like can the get Metazoo. a full hollow Mothman in there, then you uh, that is how you sell first edition. Can you imagine the there. confusion of somebody idea, opening a flesh and blood? It would be I like would having love... a podcast called May the Zoo Be With You, which is a flesh and blood podcast. Maybe they should also have Aoki sign like every 20th pack. Uh, he's a big flesh and blood fan, I've heard. Uh, um, so, you know, that would be really good. He made too. a post today. He's got yeah, a he nine nine five I. That, which a, I want to know what poor soul had to pull the gun on him. Did you see that guy's face in that photo? Hey, like, he was. I loved the um the nine five I impression during this. He, <laughs> yeah, but that's the same man. He's Metazoo. like, yeah, it's totally different, man. You're you're reading I that agree. wrong. It is totally it's, different. You're right. You're reading it wrong, man. The the, the 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 attitude towards MetaZoo is just different because of the the style of the game and yep. the hype behind it. Um, one I serious think, and one. I can't fun tell if you Louis actually saying. believe that or not. And like, I'm, I'm I, trying not. I'm I, uh, you're trolling me. I thought but, it was. But I fear you might not be. Uh, people saw that post, and then all of a sudden, we had a nine five I on on eBay. Did you notice that? Don't worry, it's not selling. <laughs> no, <laughs> crazy. Uh, I think it's a good solution. I think um, it allows those of you who are, com are who are sealed box collectors. Like I love collecting sealed boxes. That's the biggest no no about it. I think um, I like having sealed boxes. The packs aren't going to do the same thing. Um, but you could have people of, that just collect sealed packs. Yeah. I mean, that would turn into the next thing. Uh, right. it, I think it does solve what some of the issues are and it allows players to get cards instantly. I don't think it happens. I don't think that this direction goes. I mean, like, uh, here's, but, what I, here's what I have heard. And I have heard this from a couple of people who I think would know. 
I have heard that LSS does not love the bundling. Mm. Where they people are bundling first they with don't unlimited. Love you have to, you know, it's a case, it's a box of tails, a box of and then all three unlimited because people can't yeah. move it. They don't love that, is what I've heard from enough people that I think I believe it. Yeah. Um, listen, I think they know they have a problem. The question is how do you solve it? Um yeah, you gotta you gotta do something. Um you gotta I, take my uh, idea and run with I, it. And James, I, I will I will let you run with my idea for free. All I ask is that you make me direct. <laughs> actually, in this in this actually in this model, direct wouldn't really matter that much. Uh, I don't really poor, care if making direct. Right. Idea, poor that. James though. Now you making direct means he has to like sneak into your room in the middle of the night and like touch your yeah. gross pillow and put something he under could it. Be so lucky as to sneak into my room in the middle of the night. <laughs> um I I think it's a good idea. I think um all my I, ideas are. I, I think you'll I don't think you'll see it happen. Um, no. I, like, I, I, I like, think you I, like you won't see it happen for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Like what are the this wrong is reasons? a real problem and I don't think they like I sometimes wonder if LSS doesn't realize how big of a problem some of these things are, frankly. Yeah, I mean like so like the problem for me is the players I don't know what's gonna happen with Tails. If the print run is I mean, if the print run is a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand boxes, we're not going to see any issues. Right. Um, the the I don't know what would have happened with Monarch. What, what do we think Monarch's print run was at this point? I still don't know if it was forty five thousand or if it was eighty five thousand. I still have no clue. Um, and like I I don't know if that would have been enough boxes. You have to have enough boxes for the players. I. As a collector, I kind of like the idea that, like, first edition, as somebody who's going to get a lot of first edition tales, no matter what happens, like, I don't really care. But as, like, when I hear people say, I can't afford a $150 box of first edition, I need to buy the unlimited instead, my heart breaks for them. Well, it's also, like, like again, this is stupid. Like, and this is, like, and this is my core argument. If your big differentiator in the marketplace is it's that you want to be the best game? If that right. like, like if that's going to be how you want to sell your boxes, saying like, I am the best game, you got to get boxes into people's hands to play the game. Right. It is that simple. The best game that nobody can play doesn't have, matter. What we've been and, like, saying. Go ahead. You gotta, you gotta bust these numbskulls over the head and be like, congratulations, you gotta sell at MSRP. Yeah. I got think it. there's two, there's two things. You said this time and time again, and I. I agree. I hate to say it, but I agree. They've done the hard part. They've built the best game that we have played in the longest time. Ever. It yeah. is the greatest game ever created, and I am including Destiny 1 and RuneScape in that comment. <laughs> yeah, so but you're saying all, all games uh, encompassing uh, in the world. All right. It's great. It's fantastic. It's, it's a, everything it's that you want game. in it's everything you want in yes. any it's everything that you want in any time you get together with your friends to play something. And then and so they've done the hardest part. The biggest complaint I, I've had with any game is the balance, power creep. I mean, any, you know, any number of things. They've nailed that. Miraculously, through all their experience. Actually, it's probably not miraculously. That's where all the experience comes in. I think the thing that we're continually talking about is they need to market and, and modify the business model slightly or dramatically in order to enhance the market share and to share the game more broadly across more markets. And that's the biggest thing. If they had somebody who is marketing the game really well, because right now they're relying on stores to do that. Is sure. that where the market should, like the marketing should rely? Is that where they should put it? I mean, you look at oh. Watsi and that's not what's happening. Uh, so I mean, look at all the, look at all the lack of hype around tails right now. <clears throat> yeah. And they're doing spoils next week. Every day in wall street, Ooh. everybody's talking about it this week? And somebody comes in and says, why aren't we talking about flesh and blood? And like, okay. What what do you want yeah. to talk about? Let's talk about like, tonight. Uh, this is a great intersection here. Tonight, this podcast is on Friday morning. Tonight, I am playing DM Armada in Red Zone Rogue to uh, see if I get to spoil a hero whose name is Lexi. Oh, so you're not really spoiling it? So I'm spoiling it. I get to spoil the. I get to spoil the. the <laughs> I get to spoil the uh, the the mechanics. It'd be great. Sorry, Chad. This is a terrible plug. Who's Chad? <laughs> What's the name? What's the guy's name who always yells at me? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's him? kind of a it's kind of a jerk <laughs> move because being called a Chad as a male is like my yeah. least favorite thing. I would so, not want to no, be called a Chad. Name. What's his name? Yeah, it is. 
Okay, so everybody, like, I just oh, didn't know right? what you were talking about. No, it's okay. Clark. It's Clark. Oh, it's Clark. 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 You had me all, all self conscious. Give me about one it. minute. Y'all keep going. Okay. You're doing great. So I think that the I, I think that the um like the promo of stuff, like it's just different. Like I think but it's like, just different. Like, think about what has been announced in the last ten days from MetaZoo. They're doing this amazing yeah. they're doing this shirt drop where like you're gonna have one out of every six shirts will be rare and like one out of every six blind boxes will have a promo card in it. They announced what else did they announce? They announced something else today too. Like they're announcing these new things that they're doing like every five minutes. Well, and I mean, like, they're, they to, be, to be <laughs> fair, though, to be fair, there yeah, is a where ton. All the attention is. No, there is a ton of attention. They announced on... a new comic book where you can get a one every certain amount, get a new promo Rainbow. card. Yeah. As oh, a well. as an investor and a collector, you are one hundred percent correct. As right. a player, there's a ton of conversation and a ton of hype right now going on about Road to Nationals and deck lists. I absolutely and agree with that. Yeah. It, like there are like where 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 is this? Let me ask you on, this. On, I think, George, I think there's I'm other channels than Wall Street and Discord, my man. Why are I there think, other Wall, why are there other channels other than Wall Street and Discord? <laughs> I thought that was Discord. Thousand <laughs> channels in that Discord. I, why? <laughs> Who goes to the other ones? Individual <laughs> class. And then you if you go to Louis like Louis Discord, no. which you very no, no, no. I'm in Louis Discord, frequent. unfortunately, and I'm in the MetaZoo channel. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm in the Flesh that, and Blood channel. There's not a lot of talk not, about strategy. That's here. not where it's happening. It's happening that, in the individual character ones. So, yes. like, here, this is my point. I totally agree that, uh, like, we need to up the hype level for Arya. I, I would have loved to, um, you know, see some artwork and, you know, on the, I, I kind of um, All right. would I'm love to see, Ninja. I would love to see in, in the last week, there has been three posts. Okay. From where in I'm louis here. discord under ninja there's been one there's discord. also an entire tales of aria discussion group that is pretty hot yep and there there is been i i agree i think it would be really cool george come on i'm listening listen to me i'm agreeing with i'm you listening to you you think it'd be really cool continue i think it would be really cool if you had an instagram post of the artwork that they already spoiled and it's the artwork and then you zo- you flip to the right and it's a zoomed in thing on a on a focal point of the artwork that is, you know, and then a post about how this relates to the world of flesh and blood uh, that maybe it hints towards a card. Or I'd love to see a post with a um, with a card name and no artwork and something to talk about and something to I agree that there can be some more things to, to talk about and to to be hyped about. Um, Do you think people are burnt out with Monarch, but they just don't even want to talk about Tales? Like, I mean, like, like, why, why, point. why are we not talking about tails? Is like, it too if soon? If that's true, like, they need to fix that. Like, the best way to fix that is to start getting people excited about tails. Well, I mean, here's one thing. The hype week will do. Here's it. one thing. Why have we not seen hardly any pre-orders? Because we don't have our numbers yet. Like, if we, people if not, I mean, like. You're not getting I, your numbers, Louis. You Louis, might not right? Your but numbers. like, listen to me. Listen, to me. if right, I, I, I'm I'm saying that this is an issue. If I had my numbers, then I could say, "Hey, everyone, here's my number. Here's my pre-order," yeah. and then you know you're getting the product, so you're more excited about the product. Correct. Yeah, you know, like look at. Um, I, don't, I, I hate that we are always comparing with MetaZoo, but whatever. Like, look at MetaZoo on first edition. You knew your numbers two months ago. We pre-sold and everyone was like, hey, wait, I'm waiting for my bundle. I'm excited to get my bundle. I'm excited to get my box. I'm excited to get my box. That This is where I think there's, I think that LSS could lean into a little bit more of things like uh, Team Covenant. Like find, find Team Covenant-like people who will sell boxes at MSRP that aren't yep. going to upcharge, that nobody wants to buy a box of $175 box of Channel Fireball. Because I haven't seen, I bet you have seen Three local game stores do pre-orders for Tales of Aria, and nobody and trusts doing it that at they're their own num- risk. Yeah, and nobody trusts I their had, numbers. I was at my store yesterday dropping off some stuff, uh, and I had four people ask me about pre-orders. I was like, I'm not taking any pre-orders. Yeah, I, have no, I could get buy. five boxes. I get five hundred boxes. I have no idea. I could get five thousand right. boxes. Right. I don't know. And I mean, yep. Yep. like, this is silly. I mean, so, like. I think a lot of people got a lot of stores got burned too by taking pre-orders before the allocation. I will say like, again. oh, we'll take ten percent of our allocation of what we think we'll get, and they did that and they still got shorted. And LSS so, needs to show teeth to these distributors. Yeah, they need to stop acting like they are desperate for these things. Like, oh, whatever you want to do, whoever you want to give boxes to, however much you want to charge them, whenever you want to give them allocation, I love you. 
you got to say my stores need some help. They need numbers. They need to be charged this price and you can't gouge them because then they have to gouge your customers <clears> and that slows the growth of the game. I will also say the reason I don't have my allocation numbers when I call my office, they're like, well, we have a, you know, a purchase order out for this many boxes at the, the main hub, right? Yep. We have this amount, tens of thousands of boxes, hundred thousand boxes. I don't know how many he doesn't ever tell me. So we have a pre-order in. We have no idea how many we're going to get. LSS has not told us. We typically don't find out until it actually arrives in port. So it's not until it arrives in port that they even know that they got all the boxes that were supposed to be shipped to them, which is mind-boggling to me. I don't know if that's they, normal so in the TCG here's world. That happens. Here's a little inside scoop for y'all who are newer. This was the first problem with Crucible. <clears throat> we were all told we were getting a certain number of boxes of Crucible. By the way, Bushy Road Games is climbing right now to talk to me about Weiss. And um, they, we were all told we were getting a certain number of Crucible, and it wasn't until they opened the container from LSS they realized that they got a third of what they ordered. Right. And that has forever, in my opinion, changed the relationship between distributors and LSS. Anytime they call, they're like, we have no them. idea. They've said that. We don't so, have any idea of what we're getting. And I think that's the big thing is how do you increase transparency there? Because it's really a top-down thing. If there's more transparency up the funnel, what's coming into port, if they say, hey, we shipped your boxes today, here's where they're at. A lot of the times, they don't even know where they're at. And this could change all with the new printer, right? New printers. And I hope and my, it does. And my, but, my, my point here is that if, I, if stores knew what they were getting, I just want to restate our, our yep. points because I, I yes. want people to, uh, we are not it's just- not a dunk LSS fest. We, we yeah. are not just complaining about the product. We see an issue and we, have a, we, we feel like there is a solution that is pretty easy. If I, as a store, knew that I was getting 50 boxes, I have- You can I have, put it up I, for pre-orders. Today, I will get 10 messages from patrons saying, hey, when can I pre-order- um, tales of aria yeah. and if they if if, if 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 a consumer doesn't know that they are getting product if if, a, if that consumer knew that he was getting 10 boxes he would be more excited for tales of aria he would be looking for more videos he would be looking for more content he would be posting more on facebook he would be playing the game more he would be engaging with the game more because he knows that something is coming for him of the set right now there's a lot of people who are wondering am i going to get a box of tales of aria Am I going to be able to play the game on release week or am I going to have to spend $350? Am I going to have to spend an Xbox? Let's bring that back. I have to buy an Xbox in order to get two boxes of a card game from, from Channel Fireball, have- who is a who is a main hub for the game, who is like, like I have to buy, if I want to get a case, I have to buy a brand new PlayStation. I'm doing the, this is, this is Tolarian Community College now. I'm, if, if I want to get a case of first edition from Channel Fireball, I have to get a PS5 and the number one game in the world for ps5 i don't know what a ps5 game is i haven't played a video game in six months like that's like the problem right now whereas if you had more stores like team covenant that are pushing out boxes making it accessible now you know they canceled a bunch of people's orders who are ordering 100 boxes which is probably the right move um you know probably could have done a little probably could have done it a little bit sooner um but like if everyone can get a case from Team Covenant, if everyone can get a case, if, if you have whatever content creator you want to pick, like doesn't have to be, I, I don't care if it's us, I don't care if it's me, I don't care if it's uh, uh, Flesh and Bones, right? Like give them boxes that they have to sell at MSRP to the people who are engaged in the thing. Give stores boxes and say, you have to sell it at MSRP. And I know you can't do that in the United States, but if you don't sell boxes at MSRP, you can't do it in Europe then you're either. not you're not getting more boxes next time. Right. I mean, like, but like that doesn't work unless you produce more boxes. Yeah. I agree. Like this goes back to what we were saying earlier. You gotta print more boxes. Yep. Like I it just frustrates me that people can't get pre-orders. That's all I'm trying to say. It, I agree. it, frust- it frustrates me that people can't be excited for the product because they have no clue if they're going to be able to engage with it. Well, and the stores are not excited because they kind of got PTSD from the last one. So they're like, I'm only gonna do this once I have my numbers. I need one second, you guys. I, Go for I, don't it. Want to, though. I I mean, I don't understand where stores are super upset about Monarch First Edition. Uh stores made a lot of money off of Monarch First Edition. It's unlimited that the issue is with Monarch. Like that's the that's the burn point for storage with with 
There are like, stores that got burned on allocation. They yeah, were yeah, told, the, that's what yeah, I'm talking about. Gotcha. There are stores that, or there are stores that were maybe not wise. They put them for a thousand boxes and thought, if I do one tenth, I'll be fine. If I do a hundred boxes, I'll be fine. And I'll, I'll pre-sell those. And George said time and time again, stop doing pre-orders. You do not have your numbers. Stop doing pre-orders. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, this is a consequence of that. The issue though, is we're just not going to get our numbers until I didn't get my numbers until a week before they, before release, actually the week of release. Yeah, um, yeah. And Hopefully so that doesn't happen, if, but it seems like but it's if that's the case, but if that's the case, who's going to put out pre-orders if they don't even have any allocation numbers. And like, and then you have this really weird thing where like on discord and on Facebook stores aren't allowed to sell pre-orders, which I think is the right call. Cause it really? means, yeah. Like you can't go on to the, you have to do it through your site. Or through TCG yeah, player? You can't, I can't put on the Flesh and Blood Discord. I have Tales for pre-order for Monarch to 1K. Um, why, why can't you just link them to your site? It's not allowed. You can't, You're you not can't, allowed to post it on Facebook. Right. Can't take pre-orders yet. You can't take pre-orders at all. You can't take. You right. can't sell unless product is in, I think is what the rule is. Right. And I think that's a good call, but it does that. have this yeah. kind of perverse effect that like now only the people who are huge are allowed to get pre-orders yeah and it's yes. like oh oh here's channel fireballs post like, or here's star city like, games post. like i'm not Even i think it's Kevin. the right call from discord and facebook because i do think last time like you know there's so know, many it, but there was some idiot on discord who was like oh i have to cancel all your pre-orders because i got cut really hard from lss then it was time for modern horizons 2 to come out he's like actually i found some in the back you can buy them now for three hundred dollars a box, and you pay me right now. My order is due for Modern Horizons too. <laughs> um, like you know, there was a lot of that shenanigans, and like, listen, like, so this I is the new rule. I must have missed that retailer update, retailer policy. Yeah, update. like I think it I don't think it's from LSS. Is it from LSS? It's not from LSS. It's just a. It's just uh, on Facebook, bro. It's, it's just a it's Facebook, just a Facebook group, Discord. and the Discord group did it. Got yeah. it. Um, I don't know about Louis Discord. Apparently, there's a lot of chat going on there. I'm not aware Listen, of. Listen, you but, can do whatever you want in Louis Discord as a store, as a right retailer, right as I you can promote something. yourself how, however you want within the law, legal laws of your delegation I would company. I like to promote myself <laughs> and my awesome store. Company. 100% okay with me. Wait, uh, what right now, live. To? I am I am pro I am pro people who I'm pro my server getting great deals. It's great. Um, All right, posted. Boom. I would like to promote myself and my awesome store, Compete Sport. Boom. Where did you put that? It doesn't On matter. The made it to be with you, chat. <laughs> oh, that, that was the issue. Um. So, all right. There's that's more first edition than Ninja. I can tell you that much. That that's first edition. That that chat is pretty good. Uh, I like the box. I like the buy box. Pr- thing not promo buy a box pack cold foil pack thing i do too i so like it's funny the more i thought of that idea the more i really liked it because it i that is the way you can convince me that lss can meaningfully print two hundred thousand first edition box print demand yeah yeah like that's how you solve it Mm -hmm. like that's their problem right they need and i know james white said he doesn't want to flood the market with first i'm just like dude you got to pick a poison it yeah, like you got to pick your poison. That's a bad poison to pick. Yeah, I mean, if they like, don't change anything and they keep two printing, is there another viable option? Does that I make go sense? Back to this. Is this like if your thing, if you, if your compare, if your competitive advantage is that you're a great foils. game, you got to show the great game. Well, yeah. but they also, I would say that the collector's market is what initially drove the interest of the game. Yeah, but like, congratulations, that moment has passed. I personally. don't buy that. I don't buy that. When I went to pre-release event what? here in Oklahoma, there were people that drove six to five hours away to our pre-release event because it was the closest one that they had. And I would say 50% of the people I met, I've been collecting the game for months since Crucible of War. I've never once played it. This is my first time. 50% of the people I met. The other yep. 50% so, I brought. So wait a second. So, you, just said, you just said Monarch pre-release. I went to the Monarch pre-release. That, that was not what was said when I disagreed with the statement. When the game first started, I don't think that it was the collectors that were driving the value of the game or the... the they had started game. collecting the game in earlier sets, and that's what they started. They'd never once played the game in the months that they'd been collecting the game. Okay. And this was their first time okay. to play. So, listen, like, I... I think this goes back to what we've been saying the last month. LSS needs to decide what they want to be when they grow up. 
if you if you want to be a collector's game keep doing what you're doing yeah Yeah. if you want to be a player's game you need to change something if you want to be an lgs focused game you need to like you need to look in the mirror i say that with nothing but love i say that it's i think easily a top 10 store for flesh and blood and i believe easily a top five store for flesh and blood Uh, they've sold well over ten thousand boxes now of flesh and blood yeah um and i have a significant collection um you know like i think the like they're not the if you know the way i phrase people is if lss called me today like the way they called me years ago when they were first talking about the game and said this is gonna be where you end up i would never take the game i would not take the game today yeah like it's too the the business model is not lgs favored it is the cold hard fact. Nobody wants to admit this to themselves. I'm sure that your your fanboys in the chat will disagree with me, Louie, and that's fine. Hello to all y'all. I'll get I'll get I'll get private messages, but yeah. I don't really care. Do people really send you private directly, messages about this? Oh yeah. Um, but like here's Kitchen Table like, TCG at gmail.com. <laughs> send me your hate. Send me your hate. I don't really care. But I like, just think about I'm it all day is- and can't sleep at night and uh and reread my replies eighteen times before I send them. <laughs> good what but like it's hard to argue with the basic facts if you look at what if you look at who lss is supporting right now it's channel fireball it's scg I, so i i i don't think lss sees it that way i think LSS, i, 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 I think LSS either, sees i don't, think, the, I don't the, think they do either I, yeah. I think lss sees the armory kits which are fantastic and wonderful which are amazing i think lss sees the pre-release that they just announced which is great and fantastic it's and great. wonderful um what what I think the big issue is that we have seen over the last three months is with mon with unlimited, and I think yeah. they're still I think they see that like I, I got, you got to be fair with them I, I think they see that because they are doing something with what are they tails doing? they're delaying unlimited because unlimited That's not was sufficient. the issue That's but it's not sufficient if we don't run up the price if if Monarch First Edition is a hundred dollars at Channel Fireball what what does delaying unlimited solve. If you it have enough of a print run, it inflates the price of first. Congratulations. Not if you have a print run of first edition. I am still holding off. I'm still holding off on being upset until I know that the first edition print run is enough to support 200,000 players. If, if it it's supports not, if, 200, if, if, that, that's what okay. we were told. That's what we have been told that there are 200,000 okay. players. Well, so if well, there are 2,000, 200,000 boxes of first edition to support the players, then that's plenty. That's Each player gets one box. No, no. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Great. Not a case. Louis, this, Don't worry. I hope your one box for every one of you 200,000 players gets lucky. Uh, I, and this, Louis, is exactly I, why I think that's like the wrong look. I like, think this the is the, the day, other like, thing, too, is like what players are like, they're not going to be 200 players that can afford to pay first edition prices. I don't understand why you do first edition first. Does that make sense? Second edition. No, like I don't <laughs> understand it. To George's point, if you want to build the greatest game of all time, the GOAT, you need people to play it. The Michael Jordan of games. It really is. Like, this is the GOAT of games. We're not arguing that. So, But, like, w- like it's just going to appease the collectors, the first edition. There are players that say, I love playing with cold foils. I would imagine if you, like, asked, let's say, a hundred people. plays with cold foils still. It drives he's a monster. me up a I play with cold foils. Oh. I, I actually do too, but there are monarch cold foils, oh. so it's different. Oh, monarch, I, there's I'm, no such thing as a cold foil in monarch. I'm it's rolling. Like, <laughs> it's, they're all uh, every card in monarch is worth the exact same amount. I'm 1K. rolling. I'm rolling into uh, Vegas with the with my my cold foil husk. Uh, yeah, that's monarch. It yeah. does not count. And, and if I had a it's, skull cap, it, it would be cold foil. Now that'd be that'd well, be pretty okay. bonkers. I guess if I had one, it would count. I guess that's like a thing. Uh, use my grasp. Does that count? Are you using a cold foil grass? Yeah, why not? <laughs> what 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 are you, what hero are you running? Chain. Chain. The, uh, a a hero that can actually be used in classic constructed, unlike your Cheyenne. <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's right. move on. Can we move on? Because this is going to yeah, go nowhere. We're being let's... a dead horse. I, I think... minute. Is it already let's under go. the minute time? It is minute already time. under the minute. Let's go. Meta zoom minute. Man. Okay. Get to the real stuff. I have a list of things. That oh, people God. have said about the games. Ooh. I want you both to guess. 
if this is what a Magic the Gathering person said <laughs> about flesh and blood, or if it's what a flesh and blood person said about MetaZoo. <laughs> So we're trying to guess, is this a fab or MTG individual? So, so you're going to read a comment, and it's going to yep. either be from somebody commenting from Magic the Gathering onto fab, or it's going to be from somebody commenting from fab onto MetaZoo. I can already yeah. tell you, you're not going to be able to tell the difference, but I already did oh, a video, I don't know, Louis, well, I did a video on I'm this. Sure, I am sure that we, as a, as a smaller community of a smaller card game, have learned our lesson and will not say the same garbage we had to fight against for three years against MetaZoo. Yeah, I'm I've lost sure so much respect isn't, for some of them. Isn't that funny how the same arguments are from the NTG community about Fab are happening from the Fab community about MetaZoo? That, that's it's literally exact, what I'm saying. Yeah, really it's the exact same, exact same I, comments. I have, I have lost some a good amount of respect for a couple people in our community because of this. I didn't have much to begin with, so it's fine. Yeah. I, while you're looking these up, without the with, go, go ahead, Louis. No, 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 go, 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 go. Let's you're go. ready to go. Let's hear it. This is nothing but a hype train. I can hardly wait for the wheels to fall off and for all these people to lose it all. Mm. MTG. That was MTG to fam. That was MTG to fam. Yeah, that was MTG to fam. Ready for the next one? Yep. Uh huh. The art is stupid. Who would ever want to play with something as ugly as this? <laughs> that, was, meta, that was Fab to MetaZoo. Yeah. That was Magic to Fab. What? Ooh, what? On um, what video? Curveball. That was a, no. was a Discord message from Open. It's just a ago. message. I had to go back in time for this MetaZoo minute. Look at this preparation, by the way. I know. I love Look it. at this preparation. I, mad respect. Right for the next appreciate one. Your I appreciate Always your commitment. I appreciate your commitment. Who do you guys really <laughs> believe that somebody will come to your store and play in tournaments of this game? That's mm. Fab to MetaZoom. I'm going to go MTG to Fab. That was Louis last week on the podcast to MetaZoom. That's correct. Good job. That is Louis. not oh, what I, I said. <laughs> you you are. Okay, maybe I, maybe maybe, I did yeah, ask you that. Not in that. a negative way. Stop. <laughs> that was not asked in a negative connotation. I asked you honestly, do you think people are going to come into your store to play the game? Yeah. I didn't you say did people actually, aren't coming into your store. You did ask in the podcast two weeks ago. I, I asked you that. a question so that you could make a point on our podcast, and you are spinning this to make thank, Mike hate me. Thank Mike, you for your help. Mike, I did not say that negatively. The Funny fear video. in his voice. <laughs> so, I mean, like, come on. You're spinning against me here. It's all right. I got hair. I don't. I don't. Go What's ahead. your point? So, <laughs> where's your Hawaiian is, shirt today? This is all my this hair. Is this is a fancy one. Yeah, my wife I'm got it for me. I'm disappointed. That's why it looks a lot better on you. That's. I don't know who right. makes it. Should I take it off and look? It's not. It's um, not as loud. It would be in your natural state. So, ninety percent uh, of the day, I feel like George just walks around naked, and then for the podcast, he just puts on some clothes. That's. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> A lot of uh, I have never seen anybody this. play a single game of this. Until any of you have ever seen anybody play a single game, I don't want to hear another word about this game. It's trash. That was that was mad. Fab to Fab to Metazoo. That was Fab to Metazoo. Yeah. Ironically, without there's two words difference, it was also magic to Fab. So it's a little <laughs> it was. Bit complicated. That was that was a little wishy washy because I could have. Yeah. I've heard both. Yeah, because it's the <clears> exact same thing they said about the other one. Yep. Last one. Y'all ready? Ready. If I ever play this game, please just gouge my eyes out instead. <laughs> Fab to, <laughs> Fab to Metazoo. That was from Fab the Fab community. The, 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 I know who from, that one that is. From, yeah, I know exactly I, who that I, one Here is my point of this <laughs> exercise. I have no problem at all <clears> if <throat> you don't like Metazoo. I literally... Wow could not care less. Same. I couldn't care less. Yeah. If you want to say you hate the art, ask your preference. God bless. If I hear you saying the exact same nonsense we heard about flesh and blood for three years, you are dead to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I I will for not sure. go through another three years of hearing how nobody plays the game, everybody who plays it is stupid, all this terrible nonsense. If you don't like it, that's fine with me. 
a yeah. lot of my players do. Yeah. <clears throat> do not, do not do to MetaZoo what magic people did to Fab. It, fab. it is a yeah. bad look. My favorite part, my favorite part is that it's like such a thing of fear. It's a fear of yeah. flesh. It's a fear of money, really. Like it, it, It's a fear of you don't see that i don't think from the players uh nope. you see it from the collectors and the investors yep. and it's a fear of money it's people who are saying it it's people who are afraid that if you like metazoo you're going to sell your flesh and blood cards to buy metazoo right that's yep. the fear and There's... then it's the same people it's the same people who are accusing people who do like metazoo of pumping the market to make money like it's like the this ultimate like I said this in a patron post yesterday. I said, yeah, look, that was like a if, really good post, by the way. I enjoyed thanks, reading man. that. George has no clue what it is because George isn't a patron. No, Correct. no George would have liked George would have liked it. And why he's not a patron is mind numbing to me. But let's go ahead. I'm nobody's patron. I do yeah. not understand Patreon. I'm not subscribing to Louis only fan. Continue. Louis. It's fine. That That's that's private. No one else is supposed to know about that. Oh, George's um, only fan. I forgot about those. So here's what I said in the post. I said, listen. Like MetaZoo, the, the launch seems to be pretty s- successful. Seems to be pretty sure. good. Um, the the if you don't like the game, that's fine. It's it's completely okay. Just yeah, just move, move on. on. Just yeah. move on with your life. Nobody is making you watch a MetaZoo video. Nobody is forcing you to still be here in the MetaZoo minute. We we put the MetaZoo minute on the back half of the podcast. You can when we started this, you could have just moved on. We. I I don't I, I don't care about these two. What do you call us, George? Bozos. Chumps. chumps. I don't care about these two chumps. Like I do care about these two chumps. Very rude. Yes, you're not. You're not. Very chumps. mean. I, I love very you. mean, Clark. Hope you're listening to this, uh, Clark. Very mean to me. <laughs> uh, Clark, thank you for defending me. I appreciate you. And uh, George's hate is not appreciated. But wow. Like, uh, I, oh. I, it's a sign of affection. Be kind to others. Uh, uh, kind I. To others. I, I I don't even remember where I was going. I think I was going with this. But like, I like MetaZoo. I think it's fun in a different way than I think Flesh and Blood is fun. If Correct. I'm going to co- have my friend come over and play a competitive game and try to beat him, I'm going to play Flesh and Blood. If Robbie wants to come over and we want to have a good time while we're watching a movie and hanging out and uh, eating pizza, I'm probably going to choose MetaZoo. I, it's just different. I, it, it's more, it's fun. It's it's enjoyable. It's just a here different is, thing. Here is the downside of Fab being a very good game: is it's hyper competitive. Yeah, it is hyper played or hyper competitive until PD is, comes out. Like it is balanced to the point where like your skill really, really matters. Luck yeah. game stay is very rarely yep, all that a matters. determinative factor in a game. Correct. Yeah. So like it takes a lot of like juice to get it going. Yeah. And like My... I got bad news for you guys. Not everybody wants that. Yeah. Correct. My buddy won a uh, Magic the Gathering tournament with the um like one of the pre con uh like the uh, what do they call those decks that come in the, the event deck things? Commander deck? No. no, no, no. Like he won like the uh, what are the, I don't even have them anymore. Anyway, the the ones that are like they take the meta decks and they make it like eighty percent, and then you can buy the deck and play in standard for like the last half of the season. Um, and he he just showed up to Friday Night Magic. He had never played standard before. He bought that. He's like not a great player, and he won Friday Night Magic because like the the game is just it's not as competitive right like it's just and he had a blast right like he had a blast and got packs and he won that would never happen in flesh and blood like you will never go to a blitz tournament pick up a blitz deck and be able to win because like the skill is there unless you're playing against somebody who's of similar skill level but yes right because it's a high skill talented game which is what makes it great but also i think what george is trying to say is like it, it brings it out a different demographic and a different growth pattern. Like, Correct. and like, I will say this, like when I was at the MetaZoo booth, you had a bunch of different age groups. Like, you know, I met, you know, blue, I met a whole bunch of, let me, let me give, let me get some shout outs here. That okay. The demographic is a lot different. Let me get yeah. MetaZoo. Here. Who am I looking for? I love it. When George has to look up names. I'm sorry, Louis. We can't all have your brain power of like not knowing any of your patrons. I want to give a shout out to like Blue Butterfly and his uh, don't don't even at me to his and his amazing wife. We had you know 
everybody at the booth was great. Matt was there. Texas Head was there. They were all wonderful. And, like, they were very good. They had a whole bunch of different age groups come up and hang out with them. Yeah. Like, that's not Ted, bad. I think, is in his 50s. I think, you know, and you had kids coming up and talking to him about MetaZoo. You had people my age, mid 30s. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you see like for all the he said mid 30s cringe ish 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 not late 30s mm-hmm. it's it's late guys just bury me already sure you have a huge demographic a of of people. come up and play meta zoo like the, you had the a market wide... gap is okay. way market cap is way larger for meta zoo and george did capture... did you, george did you learn how to play meta zoo yeah yeah all right, so I so this is gonna be very sad. I apologize to all of you. I already knew how to play MetaZoo before that. Wait, what? Zach did not teach me. I want that to be clear. I apologize <laughs> to Zach. <laughs> he obviously did a great job teaching you guys, but I learned from somebody else. Wow. I I still I'm offended. Zach did great with you guys. He I want to do. Doing I want to construct already. some decks. We need to construct some decks, Louie, and play another game. We do. Live. Yeah, we do. I want to electrocute yeah. you. I gotta use my new play mat. James. So, um, cool. I mean, yeah, I, I think my thing to the community, back to the actual medicine minute, my thing to the community is like, if you don't like it, then just don't Move engage on. with it. Like, like it's it, it just, yeah. I don't even care if you sad. tell me. Like, if, if, you're, if me and you are chatting, you're like, man, I really don't like hey. medicine, the art sucks, that's fine with me. Ken yeah. is doing a great job of that. Ken Fisk. Ken is our, good. Ken, yeah. Ken, all right. Who, who else is a patron there that I like? Like, all the people that went to Me- MegaCon obviously were awesome. Ken is like the goat of yep. awesomeness like he <laughs> can just commented does, in the meta zoo chat he does not of course like, it is he's he been promoted like to MetaZoo, george senior <laughs> but he's never mind ken is no longer goat uh ken, <laughs> ken is like it's not for me that's cool baby i got no beef with you ken yeah me and ken are cool yeah he's always on my side too which i always appreciate ken um like be like ken if you don't like it Say a reason and then move the hell on. Yeah, I agree. Like, I got news for you guys. I don't like one of the games I carry. I don't come on here every week and go like, "Let me tell you about how much this sucks." Yeah, because like, there's no, I'm not going to help the game. I don't have any constructive feedback for the game. Right. I don't like right. it. I don't yeah. care if it goes under. Yeah. Spoiler: It is not Faber Meadow Zoo. I love both of those games. Right. I carry <clears> two <throat> other games and I like Pokemon. Ooh, Ooh I wonder what game it is. Mystery. I will not come on here every week and talk about how much I hate the game that I will not mention because I do not like. I'm not going to help it. I have right. no constructive feedback because it's. Right. I, I don't like. I it. guess what is the benefit to like other than helping that other individual maybe feel temporarily better? What is the benefit to saying those things about another TCG that you do not play and do not care about? There's, it's all it's all fear based. I'm telling you, it's but the people I, who I are coming. I understand. I understand I remember, why. Like from the podcast two weeks ago when I said this, and nobody, and like again, I talked to Mike about it in person. I'm sure Elsa does not want to admit this either. Right. They are in competition and like real competition, and you have no. seen that this week with a lot of the money from Fab going to a different game yes. called Metazoo. There's actually been a huge transition to that. I will never ever say that these two games are Louis competing. Is burying his head in New Zealand sand, and that's fine. <clears throat> but I like the like. I don't think you can honestly dispute that anymore. I I, I realize why I'm wrong about this. From a col- I don't collector care. standpoint, investor standpoint, they are competing. I I realize why I'm wrong. Why you? Why George thinks I'm wrong? I don't care about Pokemon or Magic the Gathering. To me, it's MetaZoo. It's Meta. It's MetaZoo and Flesh and Blood. Sure. But okay. They don't compete. Those are the two games that I carry. Those are the two games that you know. And like, if another game hops in, like I and I like it. Okay. Like I just don't care about Magic Gathering and and Pokemon. Uh, Why are you looking at me like that? Because I have so no like, idea what you're. I have no idea what you're talking about. You were when saying, are we playing about, Genesis, by the way. We're we playing Genesis. Oh, I'm totally game? playing Genesis. Do we get on TTS and and learn that together? Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, I have some Genesis stuff coming to to test out and to play. Same. Ooh. I have a two-player Ooh. beta beta coming this week. This. Do you really? Let me tell you, like, yeah. here's like here's like my weird prediction for this. I dropped off two boxes of beta at my store a couple. <laughs> this is actually this. funny. This is so depressing to me. So I dropped off two boxes of beta with a hand-drawn play mat that we that my store manager printed out. Beautiful. And it was it was gorgeous. And the and the players ate it up. They loved it. They really loved it a lot, actually. 
And then I get home and I'm on Wall Street, the GOAT channel. And they're like, oh my God, a box of a box of beta just sold for like six hundred dollars and I could just feel my stomach drop. I'm like, I thought I just dropped off like hundred and sixty dollars for free at my store. I did not plan on dropping off twelve hundred dollars at my store for free. Um that did not feel good. That it's did gonna, not feel good. Genesis uh, is gonna be one K. Like I think Genesis will. is a sleeper dark horse pick on this one. Like <laughs> also they are getting really a lot good. of Monarch one K, Monarch one K and every other card. Every game other TCG. <laughs> Every other box in existence is going to be 1K except for we, Monarch at this point. I, we actually, George and I were talking about this. He's like, every box that I don't want to be 1K or every box that I don't need to be 1K will be 1K. And I'll just be sitting over here. We, I think MetaZoo first edition, or sorry, Crypto Nation first edition and Genesis. What is that? Is it? It's, it's, oh, Genesis beta, beta is going to lap Monarch to 1K at this point. What's interesting, we have not talked about this. Alpha boxes of MetaZoo Kickstarter edition have already out surpassed alpha boxes. Oh, by of far. WTR. I saw somebody I trading. Double. Somebody traded two boxes of uh, Arcane Rising for a box of Kickstarter. So Seems good. The guy who got the guy who traded the two boxes of Arcane got a better deal. Based yeah, on market prices. No. Yeah, for by sure. Far. By far. Um, I back to Genesis, like the the uh, the play zone thing. It's like so cool because it's like a grid, right? And like your hero, it's like really cool. Like it's like a board game in a TCG. And I'm it's really almost like a know. miniature tactical. It might yeah, be like a little bit of X wing, a little bit. Yeah, I think the hardest part is like you won't because like you won't. Games Workshop just did another evil act. Shocking, I know. By far the most evil company I carry is Games Workshop. Yeah, like. I I've carry them and I despise it. Like they are the most evil company in the CCG world by far. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about dropping them because like they're so grotesque as a company. Mm. Just like don't um, care. They're just like, we'll fight I'm anybody. Say that. I have to look at my contract. I might need you to cut the ass. Ah, screw it. They cut me. I was going <laughs> to cut them me. anyway. They're one of the um, thousand people who are listening every month to you talk. Yeah, whatever. So like, you know, like they, like a lot of stores are like, and do I really want to carry this? And I think Genesis could fill that void. Mm, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm excited to play. I, I like um, I like games that I can just sit down and play and don't have to worry about like well, the Jordan, Jordan the, turned me onto it. Big shout yeah. out to Flesh and Bones. Typical skeleton now. I think. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, and DM Armada has a DM Armada has a great a great, video, great huh? learn how to play video. Um, so those are two guys oh, that I really. That's funny. I made my kids read the manual. That's really funny. Oh, it's a great well, video. David are, Unison. From Unison Games, he's also been wanting to pick it up and playing it for a while too. I think the coolest thing is just how involved that they are with the community and how I mean they they know they have a great game and they are doing every they they everything they can to get players the cards they they need and want at a yeah. reasonable yeah. price. It's, cool. it's interesting. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, it might solve the that. whole first edition unlimited model. We just looked at what Genesis is doing on a lot smaller scale. Mm. much smaller scale well that's much. a hard part and that's a hard part with flesh and blood they're scaling scale. up and it's growing pains but sure. um cool well uh anything else fellas no I'm ex- hopefully we'll get some allocations this week boys and girls you mean george will get allocations because this is large enough to actually matter and then I louis and i will so find I out in about a month guys allocations today and i believe tails is next mm. nice that'd be cool i'd be down. uh I am streaming tonight, Friday night, with DM Armada and Red Zone Rogue. Come root me on, and uh, as I play I'm Wizard, you, DM Armada, bring the I, thunder. Red, I have Zone, to... Red Zone's been heavy in the zoo too, by the way. But go ahead. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I have to play Kano, so against people with way more followers than me. So, that's what it me. is. Yeah, one hit five K today. DM Armada hit five K. I'm not even at four K. Red Zone Rogue hit ten K. Right, everybody. Or AK. Up to Louis today. Somebody if said the other day, right, Louis, why don't you? This is the meta, this is the MetaZoo Minute Challenge. I want all of you who are listening to this to invite three friends to like, follow, and click that bell of Louis de George's videos before his competition with DM Armada. He should not both have to suffer playing wizard and have less followers. And so, like, losing. you got to pick a poison, and he picked wizard. God bless him. I need all of you to go get three friends to follow Louie before his game with DM Armada. 
Can you just say like, hit the like button, like give me like the the smash the like button, hit the bell. Smash that bell icon so you get notified of every hot video, folks. No, it's gotta be the the subscribe button too, and the like button. I don't know any of this nonsense. Come on, smash the subscribe button, hit the like button. I don't don't like to smash the subscribe, I like to smash the bell. Okay, well hit hit the subscribe button. I need three things from you folks. I need you to like this video, hit that subscribe, and smash that bell icon so you can get notified of every amazing Louie video. If he ever has his hat on forwards, though, you have to unsubscribe. That's the rule. <laughs> That's going in every video that I ever make now. That's going to be at the end of can every like at, the, at, the, at the end of every single video instead of the flesh and blood graphic. That's like when, when I'm responsible for you getting four thousand new viewers tomorrow. I hope you're happy. Uh, I can't wait. Man, not um, doing this podcast last week, guys. I really felt it. Feels good yeah. to be back this week. Man. I didn't right. have to carry it last week. Last week was fine. That was fun. Everyone, thank you for being here. Remember, be kind to of people around you and may the zoo be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. You look great today and you're beautiful and you're an amazing human being. <laughs> be happy, Clark.